are starting, well actually last week we started a series on um, Against the Gods, and we, we opened up last week talking about this word that the Apostle Paul used um, that actually was responsible for having him water beheaded, is when he used the word Lord in referring to Jesus. When he used that phrase, he signed his own death for it because he was declaring that Jesus Christ, who was crucified, rose again, was actually Lord, and Caesar was not. He actually took the language that was part of Caesar Paul and actually applied it to Jesus, saying, no, that Jesus is actually Lord. His kingdom is eternal. His gospel is good. His kingdom is inclusive, not Caesar's. And this, we know, eventually, like I said, created uh, an issue that ultimately cost him his life. Today, we're going to move forward and we're going to talk about, uh, over the next few weeks, different gods that I believe are still present, still at work in our lives, that we're still serving. We may not call them by their Greco Roman names, but they have other names. And their presence is still felt. And a lot of us are serving these gods. We just haven't identified them. Well, I'm hoping that through the next few weeks of looking at these things, these individual gods, and what the scripture has to say about it, that we can gain some freedom in our life. You know, just a little bit ago when we sang the amazing, one of my favorite worship songs, Lord, and that not um, in bondage to fear song, and if I'm putting your words in there, it's just kind of what I do. But this song about not being in fear, I think it sounds great when they sing it, but the reality is, is I believe that there's a lot of us in here that actually are in bondage to fear. I believe that we're in bondage to fear because some of the gods in our lives are tyrannical and perfect and meaningful. They led us to a place of brokenness. They're still created. And I'm hoping that by the end of this day that we will talk to the Lord and that Jesus will just be that much more of a God in our life. Amen? Today we're going to be talking about Kronos. Kronos. Now, Kronos is a little bit, he's kind of hard to track actually because there's a Kronos that's a God of time and then you have another Kronos that creeps up through, through the Roman side of things, where Kronos was actually the god of the Titans, but then they changed his name to Saturn, which actually became the god of time. So it's all kind of mishmashed together. By Greco Roman culture as a god of time. Legend goes that he was born from Uranus. Uranus was the father of all of creation. He was born of him. He became the god of time. He eventually toppled his father uh, to gain his power. Kronos is a tyrannical god. Most people think, ah, oh, you know, Father Time, he's so kind. <laughs> but he's not. He ate his own children. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'm glad you were following me over there. Yeah. He ate his own children. Why? Because he was afraid of being overthrown. Like he overthrew his father before him. Because he wanted power. He wanted his rule to be eternal. Kronos is a horrible, horrible God. Now I have to be honest with you. Kronos, the God of time, for most of us, is one of the major gods in our lives. We just don't call him that. As a matter of fact, just being really transparent with you, Kronos was the god of my life. He absolutely ruled supreme in my life, along with some other gods. He was one I really, really struggled with, and if I'm not careful, I end up serving him again. Because his logic seems so natural. But yet, what I've understood is, is that following him always leads to a place of 
fear and brokenness. And scripture actually does speak against it. See, Kronos is a distractor. Kronos is about time. Kronos brings guilt. Kronos distracts us from where we're going. As a matter of fact, Kronos, the way you can tell, is ruling and reigning in our lives. Is when we begin asking ourselves these questions. Am I doing the best thing with my time? Am I making a difference? Oh, I wish I could go back and have some do-overs. Look at all that missed time. And we become haunted by those things. We become haunted by those questions because, see, what Kronos wants to do, and you might want to write this down, what Kronos wants to do is he wants to use the past and all that missed time to distract us in our present to rob us of our future. See, Kronos is a tyrannical God, a horrible God, because Kronos believes in busyness. Kronos believes in filling your calendar. Kronos wants us learning a thousand miles an hour. Because if we're following him, then we're not following Jesus. If we're living life according to his timetable, then we're not living our lives according to Jesus' timetable. And when we live our lives according to his, it brings a lot of guilt. It brings a lot of questions. It brings a lot of fear. And you know what, guys? I'm going to be honest with you. I know a lot of parents go through this. But for me, it was a very real thing, and still is in some ways. But I remember just the contemplation of, of my son turning 18 and leaving high school. I could tell Kronos climbed back into my life because it became very sad. All I could remember was all the missed opportunities, the missed time, what I had to remember. The ways I felt. How many of you can relate to that? There's my son there, my car. Yeah. Now we can't get him to leave home. I'm just playing him. <laughs> just playing. You can stay with us forever. As long as you pay for your own food bill. Uh, but Kronos keeps us guessing that way. How many of you can remember back, and I know for some of us it's not that far because you're already there, but how many of you can remember back when you were a teenager? Yeah. You remember that moment? You know, I, I actually was a teenager in the 80s. And the 80s, by the way, was the best decade ever. <laughs> the 80s was awesome. We had men who looked like women that wore makeup and leather pants on stage and great 80s rock and roll music. How many of you remember that? There was this other junk that came out in the 80s called rap. And you cannot be a rocker and a rocker. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a rocker. And I remember we used to use time so constructive when we were a teenager, when I was a teenager. We used to drive in circles around the mall. <laughs> Just driving in circles. I'm sure there was a lot of positive things happening in that circle. But we used to drive in circles, and everybody used to have their music playing, right? They had their music playing, and back in the 80s is when they came out with boo-boo music. You know what I'm talking about? You ride down the road, it's like boo-boo. <laughs> right? And it sounds like all the screws in your car are vibrating out of the socket. The, the person riding up in the car is like, guys, like this. <laughs> right? Driving in a circle. Boom. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Boom, boom music. It still happens now, but it's gotten better. But I remember me and my buddies, again, we were rockers. And so... <laughs> We decided to have fun driving in the circle. Connor, we got a kick drum. 
I'll buy you set the back seat and the windows down here. Boom, boom. Some of you got that. Others of you didn't. That was our boom boom music because we were too poor to go out and buy the big speakers, right? So we had the, the boom boom music out there. And I don't know where this story is going. Oh, I don't remember. And so anyway, we're, we're having this moment where this great, you know, music has invaded our world and you can't hear any singing, you can't hear anything at all. It's just boom, 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 boom. And it was considered cool. But what it actually was, was white noise. You know what I'm talking about? It's just... It's not really known for its, its quality because it was just boom, boom back then. Kronos wants our lives to be white noise. That when we evaluate our lives, all we hear is... And if we don't hear that... And he's the God of our life. We begin to judge ourselves that something's wrong. So we begin filling our time more and more and more and more. I actually had a conversation with a pastor a few weeks ago. A young pastor who was talking with me said that he, life is just busier. He's like, there was a moment where things would slow down, but it's not happening anymore. We just keep putting more and more and more and more and more and more. And he's only getting two or three hours of sleep because he's so stressed out, etc., etc., because everything's just... I think the same thing is true of all of us. I don't think it's exclusive to just pastors. I think every single one of us sitting here right now and on the outside of these walls, their life is either right now or at some point in time or maybe even in the future sounds a lot like <sighs> white noise. Fill the time. Fill it. Fill it. Fill it, fill it, fill it. Run, 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 run. Because this is the way that value your life is by being busy. But actually, I would say that I think that's the way distraction is produced in our lives when Kronos is in control. Because remember, Kronos is a terrible God. Kronos ate his own children in order to stay in power. The questions that you have to ask yourself right now is what kind of things are you sacrificing to live that white noise lifestyle? Busy. Field schedule. The two most common places that we see it show up, the number one place is family. Families are being destroyed by the minute, by Kronos. Because spouses never see each other. There's never family moments with their children. The children are growing up resentful embittered, frustrated, angry at dad, angry at mom, because it's just... <sighs> and that's the number one area we begin to cut corners from. We try to explain it and say, you know what, if we just had... if I just work harder now, later, I can have more time. But does that work? It doesn't. 
Remember the song, The Cat's in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon, Little Boy Blue and the what? Man on the Moon. When You Coming Home, Dad. That eventually switches, When You Coming Home, Son. A lot of wisdom in that song. That's what happens when Kronos is there. The second place that we cut corners from, believe it or not, is from kingdom work both inside and outside the church. I've always been intrigued by how Kronos invades our thinking because the, if Jesus was Lord, he would say we need to cut some other areas, follow him, pick up our cross, sell what we have, give it to the poor, don't take the promotion. Why? Because I need your time over here. But what we do is we cut kingdom out. Less. Cut our generosity back. Less. Why? Because Kronos is on the throne. My brothers and sisters, I am saying this is one of you. Kronos has cost me a bunch. Kronos is costing you a bunch. And if we don't topple him, path of destruction. So how do we topple Kronos? How do we oust him? How do we put Jesus back into the center of our lives? As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul talks about this. I'd like for you to look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 17. I'll be reading out the New Living Translation. Verses are here behind us on the screen. Be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. But live like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity. That word opportunity there in a lot of translations is translation. Make the most of time. Make the most of time. Right? Make the most of every opportunity. In the, um, of every opportunity in these evil days or for the days of evil. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Now there's a few things that I want to show you here. If you have your notes, I've got some stuff set aside for you here that I think is really, really important. First of all, the first bit of instruction here that Paul gives us, he says, Jesus is the Lord of your life. He has to be the Lord of your time. Here's how you do it. Number one, I love about Paul, he tells us what to stop doing and then what to begin doing. So he says, stop living like a fool or a pagan or a lost person. Live wisely. That word there, wisely, is sophos. Wisely. Now this, this Greek word would have taken people back into the Old Testament days. Remember the verse where God is saying, who will stand in the gap? Who will stand in the gap for us? Habakkuk says, I'm going to climb onto my watchtower to see what the Lord will say to me. Uh, how many of you have ever seen surveyors doing their work? You know, surveyors are interesting. They're working, the road crew's watching them work, but that's another story. Surveyors are, are plotting paths. And a lot of times in the Old Testament, they would go up onto hills and the mountaintops and they would begin to survey and look around and this word sophos takes us back to that picture and really what it means basic in its basic simplicity is this it's it's wisdom is this thing where i can begin to discern my life course based on what i'm observing from heaven and of god's movements sophos so I, when I look at my life, I can't put me at the center of it because when that happens, Kronos comes in. I have to put Jesus into the center 
and His movements so that when He moves, I move. When He stops, I stop. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to what? Lie down and plan your next day's calendar. Kathy, he pointed at you. I just saying. Peter went like this and pointed. I'm just playing. Peter, I got counseling available afterwards. So that when Jesus moves, we move. When he stops, we stop. When he turns, we turn. That is living wisely. Not like a fool. But you have to combine that with the next word, which is where he says, make the most of every opportunity or make the most of time. That word there is kairos. Now we've heard of kairos before, but kairos found in verse 16 is is really an important word because there's not an English equivalent really for the word. It's an idea, a concept that all of us in here need to embrace. As a matter of fact, there is a pagan religion or a system or philosophy of thinking um, that actually has a lot of wisdom in it. How many of you ever have heard of Zen? Zen. Zen is a way of thought. One of the beautiful things about Zen, believe it or not, is this. Is you're living in this what? Moment. And there isn't another what? Moment. Live life to the fullest in this moment. That is what this word kairos means. It's an opportunity or like a moment in time. Now I know all of us are hearing that cheesy Celine Dion song in our heads right now. But just throw that away because it's not a rock song. It's not good. So... I divert. I I get so quickly off. Anyway, I'm sorry, babe. Um, So, we're back. Wisdom, opportunity, making the most of moments. See, I think that we've equated busyness with holiness. That's Kronos speaking to us. What Jesus would say is, no, it's not about busyness. It's about using the moments that we sense Jesus moving in. Using those moments wisely. Wisely see them. But see, that's the trick of Kronos. He gets us so busy that we don't see them. We're in one appointment thinking about the next appointment. We're celebrating today's win thinking about the next game. We're preparing lessons to teach today while thinking about the next week's lessons. Are you following me? We're missing moments. How many of us have had these interruptions into our lives where it's supposed to be in bed at 7.30, 8 o'clock, is not, and comes out and wants mom and dad time, and if we're the God of Kronos is on the throne, we're spanking bottoms, putting them back in bed, the email we're deleting, the prayer requests we're sending off for later, the person that's in our office we're saying, I can't talk right now, I'm too busy. Because we're chronosing. Where God is maybe saying, pause. I got a different path for you in these next few minutes. I've got something else I want you to do. I've got something else that I want you to think about. I've got something else I want you to invest in. How many of you say yes before you think it through? Any of you like this? The SLT love this story. It's a great story. I have this wonderful thing that Tom and I do because I volunteered Tom for it as well. If you ever send me an email, and it's an important email, make sure that you put in the, the, the description, Shane, read the entire email, important information for you. Because my personality type, I get an email and I go, <laughs> how many of you do that? Come on, raise your hand so I know I'm not alone. 
two honest, godly people in the room. I do. I did that. So I got this great email from, uh, I actually get to go over here uh, with Pastor Abe and Miss Ann. I get to go where they live. Is it, is it Rocky Ridge? Is that the name of it? Or Rocky Ridge Retirement Home? And I get to go there and I get Tom and I on the first Wednesday of every month. We get to do a service. The only thing was I didn't know I was agreeing to every month because I didn't read the whole email. I thought it said, would you come the first Wednesday of this month? An eye up for a lifetime. <laughs> now I enjoy it. I love it. We're not going to cancel. Obviously, we're having a great time. Tom loves me for it. But that's just one of those things where I was so busy chronosing that I didn't take a second to read the entire email because I might have just paused and said, "God, number one, is this something you want me to do?" And number two, maybe I should ask Tom before I volunteer him. Right? But Kronos, going, 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 going. But look at what the Apostle Paul says here. He says, don't be foolish. Be wise. Get up on high ground. Scout it out. Look. Survey. See the opportunities. See the moments that Jesus is giving you. And make the most of every one of those opportunities. See, unfortunately, we think if we fill the schedule, it's better. It's not, my brothers and sisters. It's what we do with the time that's important. It's seeing Jesus sees them. Making the most of every one of those opportunities. Why? Because we live in broken days, do we not? God has chosen the church to spread his message, the gospel. He's chosen us to be light and darkness. He's chosen us to deliver good news, a message of hope. But how can we do that if we don't see the opportunities? Because we're so busy. And the thing is, is in the busyness, you'll find yourself in a place that I've been where I said, man, is any of this even making a difference? Does any of this even matter? Because I'm tired, but I'm not good and tired. I'm just tired. Young couples, young families, listen to me. The greatest gifts God has given you is your children and your spouses. That is not the place to cut corners. The kingdom work is not a place to cut corners. Don't let Kronos rule your life because the end of that path is destruction. The end of that path is looking back going, what else could I, should I have done? So Kronos versus Kairos. Kronos is busy. Fill it. White noise. Kairos is pause. Survey. Make the most of that moment. See Jesus in that moment. Let him use you in that moment. And then when that moment passes, you move on to the next moment. But see, one of the lies that we have believed is this, is that every moment is equal. And it's not. There's more important moments than there are other moments. That moment of maybe an extra 15 minutes with your kids is more important than the television show you're watching, unless it's football <laughs> or hockey. <laughs> Just playing. But my brothers and sisters, I've prepared for you some questions on the side, some things that 
I would ask for you to think about this week. And, and here is, is what I would do, just some practical suggestions, is make sure you read all the email before you agree. Before you take and say yes to just another thing to do, pause, reflect what it's going to cost you to do it. And the third thing is this week as you're working through stuff and it just seems so busy, so busy, so busy, look in there and just start saying what is essential and what is not. If it's not essential, don't repeat it. Cut it out. Lastly, hang out with your families. <laughs> Love on your kids. And it's okay if they get out of bed and they're up for an extra 15 minutes. There might be a reason why. Amen? So Jesus has a lot to say in these few verses. This week I pray that Jesus will become more on the throne of all of our lives. And Kairos becomes, I mean, Kronos becomes less. Kairos becomes more. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I come before you. And I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you that Paul, in his wisdom, said that if Jesus is Lord of our lives, then that means the other gods can't be. Father, I pray that you would give us the ability to pause and to think through things this week. I pray, Father, that, that we would ask ourselves some hard questions. And Father, I pray that if Kronos is dictating the terms of our lives, that we would throw him off the throne and put you back on. Father, help me this week, help all of us this week to be good watchmen, good surveyors. In your name I pray. Amen.